Hello, I'm Jim from jimthebikeguy.com and I've got a broken chain. Nightmare. So the purpose of the video today is to show you how to fix this at the roadside, but then when you get home, you're also gonna need, need to know how to replace it with a new chain and how to cut and size that chain and how to fit it accurately. So let's get on with that now. Just so you know, this video is sponsored by Muckoff and right now you can get 20% off all your cleaning and lubing products using the code on screen now. So in order to deal with this problem, there are things you are gonna to need to be carrying in your saddlebag before every ride. And the first one is a quick link. Now a quick link is effectively a small set of chain links like that, which allow you to quickly repair a broken section of chain. Some chains don't come with one of these in the bag when they're fitted, but you can purchase these separately. And I would say, make sure that you buy the right type for your chain. That is to say, if you've got an eight speed bike or a nine speed bike or a 10 speed bike, buy an eight speed or a nine speed or a 10 speed quick link and keep it in your saddlebag for this very scenario. The next thing you're going to need is a multi-tool, but that multi-tool needs to have a chain breaker tool on it, because in order to repair this chain, you need to first remove the frayed end, if you like, from where it snapped. So a chain breaker tool is effectively a smaller version of this. So this is a chain pin remover. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the ends of my chain and I'm gonna work out which ends I want to keep and which ends I want to remove in order to install my quick link to rejoin this broken chain. So looking at it here, I've got that one there where I've got the inner part, but the plates have gone missing. So I've got that end there. And then at this one, I can see I've still got the old plates left on with no roller in between. This is the bit that I've got to remove, this open-ended section here. This has got to go because as you can see, my quick link, which I talked about earlier, is going to replace that in order to allow me to pull those two pieces of chain back together like that. So my next job using that chain pin remover on the end of my uh, multi-tool, although I'm gonna use my workshop version, um, we're gonna take that off and clean this end up ready for repair. So we slot that over the top of the anvil section just there. You drop the chain in, you start driving it forwards, making sure it's lined up, and you can see now it's taken a grip on it. Give it some force, and hopefully you can see I'm driving the pin out of the back. And there we go, it's gone already. Take this back out. And what we should find when I've done this is those two loose chain plates have come away in my hand along with the pin here which I no longer need either. So what I've now got is two clean ends of chain ready for my quick link. Now, before you start doing this, it's a really good idea to shift your bike into small, small. That is to say the small chain ring and the smallest sprocket at the back, purely because that takes all of the tension out of the system. It removes all of the loading from all of the springs in the two derailleurs. And I guess it kind of releases the most chain for you to play with and definitely do it underneath the bike here. Virtually impossible to repair a chain where you've got the brake somehow up there. Difficult to sort of imagine how you would be like that, but anyway. So what you're looking to do is you put your two quick links in Siamese together. So if that makes any sense, one comes in from that side with the pin there and one comes in from that side with the pin there. So you're looking that they do that. So I'm gonna show this one in, this end from the back there. And I'm gonna get this one here. 
and I'm going to push it in from the front. And now the fiddly bit, because effectively you've got to pull down on the derailleur a little bit to do this, is you've got to bring them together and then push the two halves through each other. And what you really want to do is pull the two apart to lock that in place. Now to do that, you actually need a set of quick link pliers. But I fully appreciate if you are in the middle of a lay-by with a busted chain, you're probably not going to be able to do that. So another way of doing it is get on the bike and pedal really, really, really hard because the resulting pull on the chain will have the same effect as of me sticking these quick link pliers in and snapping it together like that because it's that locking process that I just carried out that ensures the chain is joined and fixed. And it's a good idea when you've done this to do what I'm doing here. Just check that the two bits of quick link are wiggling quite nicely and aren't sort of artificially stiff or giving you a solid link in your chain, if you know what I mean. But effectively, that's how you add a quick link into a snapped chain at the roadside using only what you had in your saddlebag. That's not really the end of it though, because if that chain snapped while you're out, the chances are it snapped for a reason, and that reason might be the chain's actually worn out. And so if it snapped once, it's probably gonna snap again. So when you get home, I'd probably say replace that chain with a new one, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that right now. I'm back home now in my nice cozy workshop. It's been a bit of a stressful morning because if you remember my chain snapped while I was out on a ride and I had to carry out all that repair work. Um, so on my return home, I've treated myself to uh, a cup of tea in my favorite mug. This is uh, the newer model where it has milk and sugar in it. Um, it's optimal actually, I'm just gonna check it. Mm, it's superb. So we're back here. This is my dead chain. I've separated my quick link again and I've saved it. I kind of know you're not supposed to reuse them, but I don't have a particular issue with people using them two or three times. And this is my chain I'm gonna bin. So I put my bike back in a small, small again. Small, small. And I'm just gonna unwind the chain gently from the system. Catch it as it comes off. And I'm afraid that this one's lived its best life, but now it's time to give it a funeral. And this one here is its replacement, shiny and clean. Do remember to buy yourself the right type of chain. I know it sounds blindingly obvious, but I have seen quite a few bikes where the owner um, didn't pay attention to the fact that their bike is 11 speed and bought a 10 speed chain. They are all different. Don't go thinking it's some kind of industry quirk. They're different because they're all different thicknesses. So we're going to unravel this one and we're going to check the direction on it. Some bikes, uh, sorry, some chains rather, have a front and a back and a top and a bottom, especially the new uh, SRAM flat top chains. So pay attention to what's written on it. As a general rule, if it's got a logo, you should be able to read that logo with the chain there. So let's thread this chain up, get it roved through the system correctly, and then we'll check where we need to make the cuts because nearly all chains, when they come out the box, are too long for your bike, which is another mistake that lots of people make. This next part's quite fiddly, so let's get on with it. So I'm starting by threading the chain over and through on top gear at the back, i.e. the smallest sprocket. And for now, I'm just gonna let it dangle over the top jockey wheel like that. And I want my wheel to stay still because quite often what happens is this business happens and your chain comes pays its way all the way back through. So stick half the chain down past that jockey wheel for now. 
and then I'm going to go and do the front end. So if I get lucky here, I'm going to dangle that down there like that. I'm going to reach in and get hold of it and I'm going to drop it onto the small chain ring and then I'm just going to pedal gently. Perfect, that's a good start. And let's just equalize the two sort of tails up as much as we can because now this is probably the most important part. There is a tab hidden inside the cage of your front derailleur but it's really important that you don't do that. The tab is behind there and a lot of people don't realize that you're supposed to thread the chain down the back of that tab. Just about every single derailleur on the face of the planet, Shimano or SRAM or whatever else, has a bridging tab just there. So get hold of the end of your chain, post it through the gap like that, quite fiddly to do, okay, and fish it through like that and pull it through the gap. There's your little bridging tab there. Similarly, when you come to the bottom pulley wheel, make sure you don't accidentally go around the outside of the whole derailleur here, because there's another tab joining the two parts there. So get inside it there. So it's around, inside, around, inside. And at this point now, this is where we're now going to determine how long that chain should be. I put the bike in small, small. It's been in that all the way through this process actually. And I put some tension into the chain. And I simulate the chain being joined up. But what I want to do is even in the slackest drivetrain combination that exists, I still want there to be some tension. So look at the lower arm of my derailleur and I'm gonna pull a little bit of tension into it. That's with no tension. That's with the derailleur hard against its stop. Little bit of tension. The idea being is that even if you shift into small, small, which you're not really supposed to do, your chain will still be under tension. So you're aiming to have it so that there is no combination of gear anywhere where you can artificially introduce a slack chain into the system. And I determine with a little bit of tension in the system like that, where I might want to make the join. And I'm going to tell you right now that it's there. I'm going to take one, two, three pieces out of this chain like that. And I'm going to join it there. So you can see I'm lining up the two pieces of chain over the top of each other. And I've decided it's going to look like that when it's joined. So there's a little bit of tension in that derailleur, even in small, small. Okay, got my chain tool, proper workshop chain tool. And I've decided I'm taking it back by three. One, two, three complete links made of an outer and an inner. Let's break this chain. That went really nicely because it's a new chain. So we're gonna whip that tool back out of there like that. So that's my three bits of chain I've just trimmed off. One, two, three, and the dead end. And now I'm gonna join the ends back together. So I've got my quick link. It matches the thickness of my chain. It's an 11 speed quick link for an 11 speed chain. So I'm gonna pop one in at this end here. So I'll pop that one in from the back. Yep, that's nicely engaged. And I'm gonna grab the other end of my chain here. And I'm gonna pop this one in from the front because remember, as I said, they kind of Siamese together, if that makes sense. Get the two ends of your chain and you can see we've got it right because there's a bit of a gap until I pull the derailleur. Get hold of the two parts. Sometimes this bit can be a little bit fiddly. There we go. Make sure that the two pegs have gone through accurately by checking the back of the chain as well as the front. So make sure the two parts are engaged. If you've got a set of these quick link pliers, get hold of it and get ready for a nice loud snap. There we go. 
that's joined up. Okay, let's see if the bike works. I fitted my new chain, I'm pretty happy with the way it's gone. It looks a lot cleaner as well, and it's probably not gonna break the next time I go out. The last part of the job, therefore, has to be, does my bike still work? Does it flow through the system properly? Um, and the reason I want you to do that check is because if you got the routing of the chain wrong through the rear derailleur particularly, or somehow through the front derailleur, now's the time to check it, okay? Because it is an easy mistake to make, and it's perfectly okay if when you finish this check, you find it's not quite running right somewhere because it's not sat somewhere quite right. Do it in the workshop now before you take it out on the road again and then immediately get into grief. So let's just check. Oh, it's lovely and quiet. Let's just check it's running nicely through the system. Seems good to me, but we don't know until we put some gear shifts through it. So I'm just going to pop myself over here and I'm going to put it into the big ring. It's pretty good. I know it's right because it's not clouting on anything. Uh, it's not grinding, it's not making any horrible noises, and I can turn those cranks so easily. Um, so it must be running quite smoothly through the system, but I think I might want to check one more thing. I think I'm just going to check the gear shift okay at the back as well, while I'm at it. So, still turning that crank with my hands, and I'm just going to go through the gears. back down again and you know what I think we've sorted it excellent so I've been Jim from Jim the bike guy here with Dave Arthur I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope it's been useful um, please do remember to like and subscribe and give us some feedback in the comments below if you've enjoyed what we've done if it's been helpful do let us know and we'll see you in the next one